The space domain is evolving more rapidly than ever before, unlocking new threats and opportunities alike. Lockheed Martin Space aims to tackle these challenges through internal research and development efforts as well as technology demonstrations. Here to talk about some of these technology demonstrations is Maria Demery of Lockheed Martin Space. If you enjoy this interview, please like, share, subscribe, and turn on notifications. And if you're interested in being interviewed, email summer at executivemosaic.com. Hello, and welcome to Executive Mosaic's video interview series. I'm Summer Myatt, and here to speak with me today is Maria Demery, Vice President and General Manager of National Security Space at Lockheed Martin. Maria, thank you so much for joining us today. Well, thank you for the opportunity, Summer. I'm pleased to be here. So Maria, how has Lockheed Martin Space reinvigorated its approach to technology demonstrations and independent research and development? Thank you for that question, and I'd love to tell you about it. Um, you know, we looked at our customers first and how they were really valuing getting technology on orbit more rapidly. A lot of reasons for this, uh, not the least of which that the threat pace at which we are trying to, to move that tempo is accelerating. Our adversaries are getting military type capabilities in space at a very rapid pace. So we want to help our customers to more quickly respond to that threat to provide the deterrence capabilities that we provide. So we looked at that and we really said, we need to look at the way we do our internal research and development and the way that we deploy our workforce in this work. So we did three things. Uh, first of all, we created a new line of business, which we call National Security Space, which you introduced earlier. And that took three lines of business, our military line of business, our military space line of business, our intelligence community work, and our ground systems work, and put all three into one line of business. So this enables us to get that end-to-end -end pull through and bring solutions to our customers that meet their needs more rapidly, uh, both for us and for them. A second thing we did was created an organization which we call Ignite. And we like to call that our rapid capabilities office. It's really our ability to be an innovation incubator, uh, to more rapidly look at capabilities, uh, to raise the technical readiness level so that we can get them on orbit faster. And we created that organization with the, with the goal really of getting uh, novel technology more rapidly to our customers and to get it deployed as quickly as possible. And that doesn't matter if it's capability that's produced by Lockheed Martin, if it's a commercial provider, or if it's an external company that we need to partner with to get that best of breed capability onto our platform. So that's what that organization does for us. And lastly, we have our product centers, which is the trifecta here, right? This is our capability to really more rapidly produce and manufacture capabilities and to get common capabilities across our products. So we're not innovating on everything. We're, you know, our buses are gonna be more standard and we're going to look at more commercial ways to do production and manufacturing to accelerate getting capability to our customer. So those things are the ways that we're really enabling getting capabilities on orbit more rapidly to our customer. And we love to say, you know, we're, we're doing uh, less talk, more show. So I'm really bringing capabilities forward through our R&D capabilities to show our customers, we're not just talking about these capabilities, we're actually getting these capabilities on orbit and showing you that they're real, they work, and they can be deployed rapidly. So can you talk about how you prioritize these tech demonstrations? As I mentioned initially, you know, I really alluded to, it's really about the urgency and customer mission. So we look at, you know, what does our customer need in the near term? And what are gonna be game-changing technologies in five years or 10 years from now? So we're looking at all of that. We also know that space is a really dynamic environment. There's a lot of new entrants into the field and a lot of new capability and technology. So we're looking at what does our customer need along with what are our business objectives and how do we bring that all together? And I know Lockheed Martin, you know, we've been a part of these, these domains with our customer for many decades. So we understand the mission, we understand what, what is needed, and we're looking out for the, the newest and latest technologies that we can integrate in for our customers. And as a system integrator, even recommend to them might be possible options for them to consider that would accelerate 
their technology readiness. So I think it's it's us just really um, exercising our our CRAD and our IRD, you know, our internal research development and our customer research and development dollars to really make sure that we're partnering with our customer to be doing the most needed capabilities and bringing those to the mission. So Maria, what have you accomplished through your most recent series of tech demonstrations? Great. So we have two tech demonstrations that I'd love to tell you about. Um, the first is Tantrum, which was launched in uh, December of 23. So as we started 2024, we had just eye-opening capability, very exciting that we uh, were able to start to exercise with Tantrum. Tantrum was a demonstration of wideband electronic steerable antenna capability. So our wideband ESA and really demonstrating our ability to rapidly calibrate that capability in orbit. So it was a very exciting demonstration. Due to the launch, we ended up in VLEO, uh, which is very low Earth orbit, which was not our intended uh, orbit. So it was a the demo itself was cut a little bit short because of that. But we also had some great findings and learning about the VLEO orbit and, and what capabilities and challenges you would have in that orbit. So another capability that we're demonstrating right now is our Pony Express 2 demonstration. And that is two small sats that are doing RF radio frequency collect and characterization. So it's a very exciting capability. This is something that we're really looking at how we can leverage it in JADC2, which is our customer's joint all domain command and control capabilities, as well as airspace integration. So this is a really important capability for us to have on our platforms for our customers. And we're getting really great results with that demonstration as well. So what's next in the queue? What future capabilities development is National Security Space working on? So we're very excited about our TACSAT capability, which is our next tech demo to get on orbit. And really, this is our first 5G.mil payload that will be on orbit. And it's going to be demonstrating networked voice and data satellite communications for military satellites. This is going to be really important because we need our satellite communications constellations to be really resilient in the event of disruption. And this capability is going to help to demonstrate some of what we can do to counter disruption. TechSet is really our ISR capability, our Intelligence Surveillance Reconnaissance Satellite Mission. We're going to be proving out specialized sensing and communication capabilities in orbit with this. And it's really about cross-domain target connectivity that's going to enable timely execution of tactical space missions. So when you think about TechSet, we're really talking about bringing infrared IR capabilities plus 5G together to demo in a way that really provides that cross-domain connectivity and seamlessly interfaces with our federated BMC2, our Battle Management Command and Control Combat Systems. And that connectivity is going to give our joint forces the, the comprehensive picture that they need of the battle space to be able to stay ahead of emerging threats. TACSAT has completed all the planned environmental testing, which includes our thermal vac and our vibe testing. So it's ready for the uh, dynamic launch and uh, space environment that it's going to be in. So the last demonstration that I'd like to talk about is our LM400. So LM400 is arguably our most flexible bus. It's our mid-size capability. Again, this is one that's being produced in our product center. So we're really looking at to scale and high volume production of this. And the capability can really serve military, civilian, or commercial uh, application. So it's, it's very, uh, very versatile. And we're really looking at how we can use this in remote sensing, in communication, in imaging and radar uh, capabilities. It also has uh, what we call our software defined satellite capabilities, which is the ability to both bring different missions to the satellite through software so we can upload capabilities. For example, if we learn about a new cyber threat, we can come up with software to counter that threat and, and change that satellite software so that it can be enabled to constantly be uh, updated to the latest threats. But also we can change the mission that it does by using software. So it's a very versatile uh, way for us to approach the software defined satellite. And that also provides the ability for onboard processing. So the ultimate uh, benefit of our software defined satellite is the ability to do onboard processing, which really allows us to get actionable data 
to the decision makers on the ground more rapidly in support of our customers' most important missions. Well, Maria, thank you so much for your time today and for all the work you do at Lockheed Martin Space. Well, thank you. And thank you for all that you all do to support our industry and our customers and their missions as well.